Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. To be honest, I just finished filming a um, laundry chat. I was talking about my childhood experiences and kind of growing up, and that is already live. I was going to change my shirt and do my hair differently to try to fool you into thinking it's a different day, but I thought, why bother? I'll just tell them it's not a different day. Um, Nora's asleep. I have time to film, and I'm going to film two laundry chats for the price of one, but they'll be, hopefully I'll put them up spread out enough that it's not, you know, the same thing over and over. These are like my favorite ever pants. They have little ruffles on the booty. They're so cute and they look like little black leggings when she wears them. She just looks like, oh, I just love those on her. She's so cute. Um, <clears throat> so today I thought I would talk a little bit about, um, motherhood. <laughs> this is something that I haven't talked a lot about on my channel um, other than, you know, just brief little interludes and updates throughout, you know, my vlogs and things like that. I did, if you haven't already read, I shared a very detailed account of my birth story and my postpartum story on my blog. Those two things I had originally anticipated sharing here on YouTube, but they were so all over the place that it really was helpful for me. Writing is really my passion and it's my favorite form of communication. And so it was very therapeutic and helpful for me to sit down and think through my birth story hour by hour, day by day, and write it all out. And same with postpartum. So if you want more information about those, I have all kinds of details, kinds of pictures, all kinds of things um, that I've never shared on YouTube. I will link those both in the more info bar below so you can go and check those out. But I'm going to talk a little bit beyond um, giving birth and postpartum, although all of those things tie into motherhood. I don't obviously, if you can't already tell, I don't have any kind of script or anything. I just sort of want to talk about what it's been like. Um, and, and all that kind of thing. So I have wanted to be a mom all my life. Ever since I was really young, that's all I really have ever wanted to do. In 2013, I wrote a blog post about how the only thing I really ever wanted to, quote, accomplish in my life was to be a mom. And um, that pretty much has always rung true. Um, it's just been a huge... Um, desire of my heart all my life ever since I was a little girl um, I've always really enjoyed being around children that kind of thing um, so motherhood is something that I anticipated greatly it was something that that desire and that longtime desire made the pain of not getting pregnant quickly um, sting really deeply because I just thought this is like something I feel is such a part of my life's purpose and I feel so confused that I'm not able to get pregnant. Um, it took us a little over a year, which for some people is a really long time and for some people is a really short time. But for me, that felt really long, you know, and each month that would go by, it was, it's just really hard. So my heart breaks in a thousand pieces for those of you who are trying to get pregnant and aren't pregnant. That sting and pain, there's nothing I've ever experienced like that. It is Horrible. So I'm really truly sorry. My heart is with you. My support is with you. My prayers are with you and I pray over your womb that you get pregnant quickly. Um, I, I know it's so difficult. So we finally got pregnant. I was thrilled. We were thrilled. Every, everything was great. For all intents and purposes, my pregnancy was pretty uneventful. I had aches and pains. I had acid reflux. I was extremely nauseous. Um, you know, all that kind of thing. But there was no major red flag alerts. I didn't have any major issues. I didn't deal with some of the things that other women deal with. Um, any, there was no, no, no one, there was never any concern, um, which was a huge blessing that I do not take for granted. Um, and so Nora came out, she was healthy and big and all of that. And then real life began. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing? Um, certain things were easier than I expected. Nora is a pretty good sleeper. Um, and so she sleeps pretty well, not per, she sleeps like a baby, right? So babies wake up frequently and they like to be nursed or fed back to sleep. That's what babies generally like. And so she sleeps like that, but she is not up 
I'm blessed that she's not up every hour, every 30 minutes. She's never done that. She's Sometimes she'll wake up two or three times in the night, but even still when I wake up, I feel pretty okay. Um, so the sleep was something I was deeply concerned about that has not been as big of an issue. Um, breastfeeding for me has been very, very, very challenging for a variety of reasons. Nora had a lip and tongue tie that we had to have revised early on, and um, that was causing excruciating pain, worse than labor, worse than childbirth, awful, awful, awful pain. Um, so dealt with that, just a lot of bre other breastfeeding issues too. We dealt with thrush, we dealt with, um, oh gosh, just pain, 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 pain for a long time. Um, and finally, it, it finally started getting easier around the 10 to 12 week mark, but 10 to 12 weeks of feeding a baby around the clock um, when you're in excruciating pain is really hard. So there is, there has never been and there will never be any judgment from me on any which way you choose or have chosen or will choose to feed your baby because I am definitely in the fed is best category, feed your baby, that's what's important. Um, I totally get that breastfeeding isn't for everyone. Sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it's it doesn't work because it's so excruciating or whatever. So that's a whole other conversation, but that was something that was much more difficult than and I anticipated. And beyond that um, was obviously, I if you've read my postpartum story or heard me talk about it, I went through a lot of pain in my postpartum healing and I had to have um, follow-up surgery, which was awful. Um, so that was a big part of my experience as well. And then furthermore, I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and that really made things really difficult. I made the decision along with my midwives guidance and help and under the care of my OBGYN to go on medication. And I've been on medication now since mid December. So December to January, January, February, February, March, March to April about four and a half months, it has made a huge, huge, three million huge difference. Like a, my life changed after those first two weeks of kind of adjusting to the medication and getting um, acclimated to it. After those first two weeks, it has made just a huge, huge, huge difference. I felt like I was drowning. I was miserable. I was I just was so unhappy and it was so hard to have this beautiful, precious baby and then to be just like losing it. Um, and things didn't just like snap and get easier, but I felt normal again and that made everything so much easier. Um, as far as mothering on like a day to day basis, obviously, um, at first it felt like our entire schedule world and life just flipped upside down and suddenly every second of the day was dedicated to this precious little girl. And so I remember saying to my mom on the phone, like, when I'm hungry, I end up nursing Nora. When I need to get changed, I end up changing her. When I need to bathe, I end up bathing her. It's this, like, sacrificial love, and it it really is draining, but in this beautiful, refining way. Um, and it, it's hard, though. <laughs> Beautiful, refining, and hard. Um, and that was how, at first, especially when they're little, they're just so needy. They're eating so often. They need so much help. They want to be held all the time. They can't sit up. They can't, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's particularly difficult those really early, early days. Now I feel like she, she'll be six months. Probably by the time this video goes up, she will have recently turned six months old. So half a year already. Um, now we are in a routine and a rhythm. And it is such a blessing to be here like to future Blair if you have more kids around four and a half to five months it gets so much easier in my experience um, so much easier they start having their own little rhythms their own little um, routines you can anticipate their needs and um, you learn you really learn them I mean you're like learning each other so you really like for me it's like I really have learned her different cries and when she whimpers this way it means this and when she does this it means this and you, you just kind of I've like learned her so much better than I did at the beginning and that makes life so much easier because I'm not guessing all the time I feel much more confident as a mother um, I'm also not in pain and not it's being thrown through postpartum depression, which those two things also make life a lot, a lot more streamlined. 
Um, so we definitely have our own little routine now. Um, we have decided not to do sleep training in the classical sense. So we are not doing like the cry it out method um, or anything along those lines. That is each parent's prerogative to choose what works for them. That just doesn't feel right to me. It goes against my instincts. Um, to me, if I, I don't want to start a war, I think you have to choose for your family what works for you. It doesn't work for me and it feels really uncomfortable to me. And so instead I've been doing a lot more um, laissez-faire approach. I'm like, when she falls asleep, she falls asleep. When she wakes up and she needs me, she wakes up and she needs me. And so it's been really interesting to follow that line of logic and watch her fall into rhythms and patterns on her own. Um, and so I can anticipate like when she's going to wake up in the morning and when she'll need to go down for her first nap. And listen, this is like an ideal day. Some days she takes zero naps and she barely sleeps at all at night. And some days she sleeps really well throughout the night and she takes an 11 a.m. nap and she takes like a 3 p.m. nap and it's this really nice rhythm to our day. I don't want to paint some picture of it being like perfect every day because it's not. I think that's super unrealistic because that's not how babies sleep. <laughs> babies sleep when they're ready to sleep and sometimes that's all. it's all over the place. So that's been our approach and that's kind of how we as parents have handled it and it's worked really well for us and for our family it's been um even you, you know it's been there have been ups and downs there have been some days where everything with sleep has been easy and there have been some days where everything with sleep has been really difficult um it just depends on the day it depends on all of our head spaces that kind of thing um but she loves being rocked to sleep and fed to sleep so that's pretty much what we do um, and it, it works really well for us and for our family. So that's kind of how that's been going. Um, sh we haven't really gone out into the world with her barely at all because I was in so much pain for the first three months. And then I finally started feeling better. And we did go, Nora and I did go up to Maryland in late February before COVID-19 really hit and, um, took a trip to go visit my family. It was sort of like a hallelujah, I'm feeling better trip. And so we went out in the world while we were up there and went and did a few things, and it was really special and really fun. But then when we got home, that was in, um, we got home like the very beginning of March, and within the first two weeks of March, COVID hit, of course. And so as a, a family of three, me, Riley, and Nora, I mean, I could probably count on one hand the number of like places we've been with her, like in places, I mean, barely anywhere. I really look forward to the day, which I don't know when this will be, but to the day when I feel comfortable taking her out with us and being able to go to restaurants with her. She's really pretty chill. Um, if you've seen her in videos, that's kind of her temperament. She definitely takes after her daddy. She is a very mellow, low-key temperament. And so she's the sort of baby that I think would be pretty easy to take out places whenever we have taken her out places. She's just, she's pretty, she's pretty easy in that way, in those, in that respect. Um, but we haven't been able to take her anywhere. So good times. Um, but whenever that happens, I would, I'm excited to be able to do that. It's funny, I was FaceTiming with my sister, Allie, who has a, if Nora's just turning six, Henry just turned eight months. They're almost exactly two months apart. And Henry just started crawling. It is the actual cutest thing you've ever seen in your life. He, First of all, he's like a yummy baby. He is like a chubby, yummy baby. And he just started crawling and he's so proud of himself and he, it's just really adorable. Um, but I was thinking when I was FaceTiming with her, I was like, gosh, Nora will be right behind him, you know, crawling really quickly soon. And, um, I was really hoping to go on a Disney cruise while she was in the crawling months so she could be in the diaper dash and win like the champion that she is and we could get the bib and all the little stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my Disney cruise vlogs, but they do this diaper dash and they put all the crawling babies, they have like a setup. They put all the crawling babies in these lanes and they have heats and they, it's a, it's a race and it's, adorable and hysterical beyond what I can tell you. It's like my favorite part of Disney Cruises and I was so excited to think about getting to do that with my own baby. Um, I'm not thinking that's probably going to be very likely because once they start walking they're disqualified. They have to be crawling babies. So I don't think that's probably going to happen but one can hope. <laughs> I would love, I would love if it was able to, if we were able to do that but I'm not totally sure about that. Um, so 
that's one thing. But it's she's sitting up now. She started. She really is getting good at mimicking. So if I say mama, she'll say mama, mama. Like she'll re repeat that back to me, um, or different noises. Or if I um, like blow bubbles, or she'll do it back to me, which is really cute. You can just see her little brain growing and working. It's really really sweet. Um, <clears throat> She's just amazing. Like every day I'm just amazed by her. I love being her mom. One of my favorite things, and a lot of people told me that this would happen, but I, and I believed them, but you, I, I couldn't imagine it. It was people kept saying, just wait until you see Riley with Nora. It is the best thing in my entire life. It is the best thing in my entire life. They are precious together. She, when he walks in the room and she catches his eye, she beams. She, her little dimpled cheeks, she just beams. She's so excited. She loves her daddy. Riley has taken to becoming a father like nothing else. He is obsessed with her. He loves her. He hops out of bed in the morning to get her and change her diaper and snuggle her and play with her. And he he just loves her. They have all their own little routines and he'll go and rock her and play, just sing to her. And it's like the cutest. They have their whole own bond and relationship that's separate from mine with her. And it's just so special to see. I absolutely love watching that. Um, another thing that someone, I don't remember, I cannot remember who told me this, but it's like the most precious thing. I just said the same thing to my friend, my dear, dear friend, Olivia, who is giving birth to her first baby, a little girl, Nora's future best friend in June. Um, <clears throat> Olivia was my childhood best friend and remains one of my very dearest friends. But I was just telling her this on the phone. I said, someone said this to me when I was pregnant and it is probably the best thing I heard throughout my whole pregnancy. Someone said, Riley just got home and Nora just woke up independently. So I'm gonna wrap this up. But someone said to me, um, you have no idea how much you're going to love your baby, but you also have no idea how much your baby is going to love you and how much love you're going to feel in return. And if that isn't the truth, like I, Riley and I talk every day about how obsessed we are with her and just deeply in love with her we are. But then also like when I go pick her up after a nap or I nurse her or I hold her, I rock her and she looks up at me and she'll take her little pudgy hand and like stroke my cheek. That love that she radiates back to me is like, there's nothing like it. It's precious. It's precious. I love it. Um, she's probably going to come out here with Riley in a second. You can see her and her cutie little sleepy self. She just woke up from a good nap. That was a good nap. Good job, Nora. Um, so anyway. Oh. Parenting has its highs and lows. We've been learning every day. Riley and I have been navigating it together, making decisions together, talking with close people together, figuring out this whole thing together. It is um, wild how many decisions you have to make. Hi, little girl. Nick, come say hi. I'm talking about you. Oh, this little precious avocado. What are you doing, baby girl? Just being a baby. Being the cutest. Being the cutest. <clears throat> it's amazing how many decisions you have to make as a parent all the time. So Riley and I have been teaming up, <laughs> making those decisions together, and you just sort of have to do your research, weigh the pros and cons of different things, talk to friends and family, and make decisions and move forward because there are like so many different decisions to make. But we are so happy to be where we are with our little six-month-old princess. She's so precious and um, has been such a huge blessing to us. So we've taken to parenthood, I think, really well. It's been hard at times. It's been amazing and um, we just love it. So that's our little update. What do you have to say, Rye, about being a daddy? I loved it more than I thought. He said he loves it more than he thought he would. Every day we're like, Nora, you make us want 500 more babies. Yeah, not pregnant, not trying to get pregnant, not going to be pregnant anytime soon. So y'all just keep yourselves from typing all those questions. <laughs> but we do love it and we would love to have another baby in the future if we're able to. Let's end it on that. 
Thank you so much for watching. Would love to hear about your experience with motherhood or if you decided not to be a mama or if you're not a mama yet, but you are an auntie to your friends or your sisters or your cousin's kids. And you know, I know how I was in that role for a long time and that is a precious role as well. Um, so I would love to hear from you and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for hanging out with me while I fold my laundry and I'll talk to you later. Bye.